Cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6, the oculomotor, trochlear, and abducens nerves, control eye movements. Because these nerves work together so closely, they're examined as a group. The oculomotor nerve is also responsible for pupillary constriction and raising the upper eyelid. Check the position of the upper eyelids while the patient looks directly at you. The eyelids should be symmetrical and should not obscure the pupils. Next, inspect the pupils. They should be round and approximately equal in size. Size should be appropriate to room light. Test the pupillary reaction to light by shining a light on each pupil in turn. Observe for the direct reaction and the consensual reaction. If the light reaction is abnormal or ambiguous, test the patient's near reaction. Hold your finger or a pencil about 10 centimeters from the patient's eyes and tell him what to do. Look at my finger. Look off into the distance. Watch for pupillary dilation with distant gaze and pupillary constriction with near effort. Look at my finger. Look off to the distance. Repeat this test if necessary. Look off to the distance. Now check the extraocular movements in the six cardinal directions of gaze. From two to three feet in front of the patient, ask him to look at your finger as it moves to the patient's far right, to the right and up, to the right and down. Now move your finger to the far left, to the left and up, and to the left and down. These movements should be symmetrical and conjugate. Look for the jerky movements of nystagmus in lateral gaze and in upward gaze. Test for convergence of the eyes by asking the patient to look at your finger as you move it toward the bridge of his nose. Eyes can usually follow your finger to within five to eight centimeters. The sensory portion of cranial nerve five, the trigeminal nerve, mediates facial sensation and the sensory part of the corneal reflex. The motor portion of the nerve innervates all the muscles of mastication. I'm going to test to the test the nerve's the motor function, ask the patient to clench and then relax his jaw relax. while you palpate the temporal down muscles down and then the masseter muscles. Relax. Note the strength of muscle contraction. The sensory portion of the trigeminal nerve has three divisions, the ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular divisions. All three areas should be tested symmetrically by assessing the patient's sensation of pain, light touch, and perhaps temperature. I want you to close your Explain eyes. and show the patient how you will assess for pain. Then, with the patient's eyes closed, sharp. test for pain sensation using the sharp, sharp end of a previously unused safety pin or sharp. other suitable sharp object. Occasionally, no. substitute the dull end for the sharp one as you test sharp. scattered areas. Sharp. Sharp. Now I'm going to compare side to side. Keep your eyes closed. Is this the same as this? Then compare yes. symmetrical areas is on both sides of the face. The same as this. Yes. If you suspect an abnormality, Hot. confirm it by testing temperature sensitivity. Cold. Again, explain the test first Cold. to the patient. Then, with the patient's eyes Hot. closed, test scattered areas. If Hot. indicated, compare sides. Cold. I'm going to test the sensation of your face by lightly touching the cotton against your skin. When you feel the cotton touch, I want you to say now. Now, if you close your eyes. Next, test yeah. for light touch using a wisp of yeah. cotton. After explaining yeah. the procedure, test in scattered areas. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your eyes Again, closed. compare sides. Is this the same as this? Yes. To I'm test the corneal to reflex, ask the patient to look up and away from you. Look to the left and now I'm approach right. the patient from the side, out of his line of vision, and lightly touch the cornea with a fine wisp of cotton. Normally, the, the right patient's out. eyes blink and tear, but a contact lens wearer may have diminished or absent corneal reflexes. Cranial nerve 7, the facial nerve, innervates all the muscles of facial movement and expression. It also mediates taste sensation in the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. 
To assess this nerve, inspect the patient's face at rest and during conversation. Note any asymmetry and look for tics or other involuntary movements. Next, ask the patient to raise his eyebrows, frown, close his eyes so tightly you can't open them, show his teeth, smile, and puff out his cheeks. Normally, the patient can do these maneuvers easily and symmetrically. Cranial nerve 8, which is the acoustic nerve, mediates hearing and vestibular function. Because vestibular function is not routinely tested, our exam will focus on hearing. I'm going to, to assess hearing, occlude one of the patient's like ears with your finger, stand one to two feet away from the patient, and cover your mouth to prevent lip reading. Two, now four. test the open ear by softly whispering numbers or words. Gradually increase your voice volume until the Five, patient can identify nine. the spoken numbers or words. If hearing is diminished, test for lateralization by performing the Weber test. I'm going to, strike the to do this, the place the base of a vibrating tuning sound. fork firmly on top of the patient's head. Then ask if he hears the sound on one or I both sides. In the of my Normally, the sound is heard midline or equally on both sides. Next, compare air and bone conduction by performing the RINA test. Place a lightly it. vibrating tuning fork on the mastoid bone behind the ear. When the patient indicates that the sound is no longer heard, quickly place the vibrating fork that. near the ear canal. Yes, can. Normally, the patient can hear the sound longer through air than through bone. Be sure to test the opposite ear. Cranial nerves 9 and 10, which are the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves, mediate the sensory and motor functions of the palate, pharynx, and larynx. I'd like to take a look at the back of your throat. Can you open your mouth? To test really these nerves, ask the patient to say ah or yawn as you observe the soft palate and the uvula. The soft palate should rise promptly and symmetrically, and the uvula should remain midline. I'm going to ask Next, you to say, test the again. gag reflex because one side at a time. Using a tongue blade, say, touch ah. one side of the pharynx, then the ah. other. You should see a prompt rise of the palate and other signs of gagging. Finally, ask the patient to swallow. It should be done without difficulty or regurgitation. Cranial nerve 11, the spinal accessory nerve, innervates the sternomastoid and upper trapezius muscles. I'm going to test the strength of your shoulders. To I'm assess this nerve, ask the patient to shrug his shoulders upward against your hands. Your shoulders against During this maneuver, evaluate the strength and contraction of the trapezius muscles. Good. Can you turn your head to the Then ask the patient to turn his head to each side against your hand. And relax. Observe the contraction of the opposite sternomastoid muscle and note the force of movement against your hand. Cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve, mediates motor functions of the tongue, which in turn affect articulation of words. Inspect the patient's tongue as it lies on the floor of his mouth. Observe for fasciculations. There should be none. Ask the patient to stick out his tongue. Note any asymmetry, deviation, or atrophy. The tongue should protrude straight out 